Hi, I'm Raphael Rosendahl. Uh, I'm an artist. I work with the computer and different materials, and I live in New York. The process was really, I created the images, and Christopher Meloni came back with an idea within a day. It was very fast. So we wanted everything to feel fast. The, the PDF is light, the ideas are light, the colors are light, and it, it just feels lively. It's not something that we thought about for too long. The whole idea is that the book has a lot of lightness. It doesn't feel like a book with a heavy back and a heavy spine. The work is very digital and we wanted the, the pages to feel like images that are floating. So that's why we're binding them with this colorful red thread. Uh, it's a thin paper that absorbs the ink really well and has a special texture. So the way the ink is absorbed is lively. You see uh, the details of the paper through the ink. My day starts with thinking in my sketchbook and trying to actually turn off the thinking and just letting ideas come without thinking why or how or what's going to happen and just keep drawing. So I often draw the same drawings over and over again just to start the ritual and then I just draw whatever is around me. So there might be a table and then I might think about the idea of a landscape and how can you reduce the idea of a landscape and how can you create depth with just a few elements. So this is the book, Home Alone, Three Star Books and Me. There's a case with the book inside and each case has a different color fabric, a different combination, so each case is unique. A lot of this is kind of at the edge of figuration and abstraction, so sometimes I don't even want to say what it represents. To me, a lot of abstraction is linked to animation. So when I make a drawing like this, I'm thinking about these shapes moving around and these shapes moving in a different direction. But I'm at the point where I didn't even want to animate it anymore. A lot of them, I felt like the suggestion of movement was more interesting than actually animating it. A lot of this was also referring to the early optimism of the internet and early video games. The internet was not a political tool, but it was a new place that, to be discovered. When you think of a video game, you start off with a completely empty area and then you, you create a setting where things might happen. So a lot of this to me is, this, these could be places where things might happen. The idea of color to me came a lot out of necessity. So when you start out on the internet, and early screens, the colors were so limited and so unreliable that I had to work with the brightest colors. So on the in early internet, if you would do purple next to red or something subtle, the colors might disappear on an older monitor. So I had to choose the most contrast and the most saturation and that became my visual language. But I was always making colors with the idea that they're a little bit different every time you see them. So sometimes they're projected, sometimes they're on an LED screen sometimes they're at home and this is a new approach to me about color where we could be very precise so I wanted the liveliness of these internet colors but at the same time they're very fixed they'll be this color forever where colors on the screen are more flexible and these are very defined and uh, precise. A lot of the, my thinking is also about the contradiction that we think we want to be in nature, but at the end of the day, we choose not to. And even when we're on a train on our way to nature, we're still looking at our phones. Uh, and apparently the phone is more interesting than the window. I try to go to a place where I'm, there's not much stimulation and there's not much coming in. And that's becoming more and more difficult because the world is so attention grabbing. The whole world is fighting for your attention and it's getting more and more clever. So it's a lot of this is the rejection of attention. Here you can see there are 24 copies in my signature in the year 2020. So that's the book. <laughs>